Good Thursday evening. I hope you all understand uh, not having the Wednesday night live stream available anymore. When we returned to the church Sunday and started worshiping again in person, uh, we also then went back to our Tuesday night study here at the bridge and our Wednesday night study at Faith Bible. And uh, of course, I'm not omnipresent. I can't be at both places at once. So uh, we thought, what can we do? And I hope that this is a positive alternative to you as far as still having a study throughout the week. And so it typically will be uploaded by 7 o'clock Thursday evening. Uh, it just works that way, or it works better that way for us. I hope you're good with that. Uh, it was truly a blessing to be worshiping together again Sunday. Uh, it was great to see the church folks again and to have communion together to uh, observe the Lord's Supper. That was such a blessing. And I perfectly understand those not feeling comfortable coming out yet. Uh, please do not feel uh, pressured or, or burdened to do so. You pray through that and you come and worship when you are ready to do so. Uh, and we're just grateful that you're still joining us through social media. Uh, let's open our time together or start our time together, this, this study that we're going to have tonight. Uh, let's start with prayer. Father, I thank you uh, for life. I thank you that every day is a blessing. You don't give us borrowed days. You don't give us used days. Every day is a new day. It's a gift from you. Uh, Father, every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from you, the Father of lights, and we just praise you for that. Father, we thank you for the for the tr tremendous gift of new life in Christ. Your word says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and I just praise you for that. We thank you for your spirit that does the work of, of regeneration. We thank you for the fact your spirit comes to dwell within and we're sealed onto the day of redemption. Father, we thank you uh, for your word. We thank you that your word is forever settled in heaven. We thank you that it's a lamp onto our feet, a light onto our path. I thank you that we can study your word. Thank you that we have it available to us. And thank you for a desire to want to, to study your word, to uh, learn more about you and, and to learn, uh, Father, what you want of us. And Father, we thank you that we can do so through your word. Father, we thank you that in the midst of, of affliction and turmoil and trials and struggles, and I'm not just talking about the, the COVID-19 and other things that are going on, not only uh, in our nation, but worldwide, there's always struggles. And I just thank you, Father, for the assurance and the hope that we have in Christ. Uh, Father, I thank you that people can face these days of uncertainty with hope if their hope is in Christ, uh, whether it's uh, sickness, whether it's uh, unemployment, whether it's uh, effects of this virus or other effects in, in our nation from various things that have taken place recently, I thank you that hope is found in Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the truth that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we have an assured hope, a hope that this world can't take from us. Uh, and so, God, I pray that uh, our time together that your spirit would use your word, Father, that uh, that you, the triune God, Father, will minister to our hearts through your word, through your spirit, and that people would find hope in Christ. I thank you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, uh, my approach may seem like it's uh, eight shot coming out of a modified choke. Uh, in other words, things may seem scattered as it goes forth. But I pray that God's Word and the Spirit will bring unity and bring it all together. What I'm really doing tonight is picking up where we left off with the armor of God. I'm not going to work through that again, but just share with you how God's been speaking to my heart through His Word and, and, and to see uh, how he, he moves us, moves our hearts and our minds by His Word being applied to our lives. We left off Ephesians chapter 6. We, prayed, we talked about the armor of God. I'm going to read two verses to you, Ephesians 6, 18 and 19. And as we looked at the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, and then Paul summed things up with the importance of prayer. And so let me 
read these two verses to you, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 and 19. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always, praying always. All prayer, he says. Verse 19, And for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel. And so as I have been considering that verse more, it's challenged me. Uh, It's challenged me, Scott, how bold are you? I've told you before in the past, the church folks hear it all the time. Naturally, I'm a timid individual. But uh, Paul tells young Timothy, uh, he's not that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and and of self-control, of a sound mind. So, the Spirit of God can give you and I a boldness, and we need to live out in that holy boldness. I believe it's it's proper, it's biblical to pray for a boldness. That's what Paul is saying here. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So just want to put that out there, not meaning to lay heavy burdens on you, but to just uh, ask you to consider praying, God, help me to be more bold in proclaiming your goodness to others. And just how God works. So that, that's all my th- in my thinking as we finish that up. And as the days, go, as the days went on, uh, Sunday night, so Sunday was a great day. Again, we worshiped here at the bridge. We worshiped at uh, Faith Bible. Very moving just to be together again because I can't, you, you can't substitute. I mean, this is good. Social media is good. We can study together somewhat this way, but seeing face to face, looking at one another, worshiping together, uh, you, you can't replace that. You can't replace that. So after a very enjoyable Sunday, uh, Sunday night I was reading my devotion. I like to look at Charles Spurgeon's morning and evening devotions. I don't always hit it every day, but most days I do. And and that evening, Sunday evening, so just this past Sunday evening, the devotion, um, it was about this. It it was about be zealous. And, And just hearing those words, be zealous, you know, that challenged me because sometimes our zeal can wane I, I remember an elderly woman telling me I, I was a babe in Christ we're talking thir- over 30 years ago and uh, I remember her telling me she says you have all this zeal but you won't always have that and I, th- I thought that was an odd thing to say and I, I didn't feel it was a very uh, edifying thing to say but that was her observance through life and maybe that's what she experienced herself and that still comes back to me and and truthfully there's times when my zeal wanes and so when i read uh spurgeon's devotion and and he used revelations chapter 3 verse revelation chapter 3 19 let me read that verse to you so and, and just keeping things connected here ephesians 19 paul's asking for prayer that he may open his mouth boldly uh to to make known the mystery of the gospel and uh yeah, sometimes I'm not as bold as I ought to be. And, and then to read about having zeal, and sometimes my zeal's not always there. Revelation 3:19. And Jesus is talking to the church of Laodicea, a, a church that's considered lukewarm. And in verse 19 of Revelation 3, he says this: As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. There be therefore be zealous and repent to be zealous and we know that new life comes through Christ we know that uh, fruit comes by abiding in Christ it's a work of the Holy Spirit and zeal to me is a work of the fruit of the Holy Spirit or it is a work of the Holy Spirit it's the Holy Spirit that brings us and gives us zeal but what causes our zeal to 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 wane and that's a question that I want to ask zeal zeal When Jesus, in John chapter 2, went in and saw what was taking place in the temple, he he made a whip, God's Word tells us, and he went in and he basically cleaned house. Let me read two verses from John chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. 
and, and this mentions about Jesus' zeal. John 2, verse 16. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. And, and that's a quote from Psalm 69, verse 9. Jesus had zeal. What does that mean? When well, the Old Testament, zeal means a hot, glowing, fervent interest. And so there's an intensity there. There's an ardor there. It's an intense devotion. And, and so Jesus' uh, devotion for Christ, or for, <laughs> for Christ Jesus, Jesus' devotion for the glory of God, Jesus' devotion for the honor of God, and for the honor of the temple to be a place of prayer, a place of worship, it was that zeal, that fervency, that moved him to act as he did that fervency, that zeal to act as he did. They had turned it into a, a money racket thing. They had turned it into, a John's word, a house of merchandise. I think a lot of that still takes place today, but we'll, I'm going to set that aside and leave it at that. But we see Jesus moved. We see him moved and, and him being zealous for the things of God, for the honor of God, and for the honor uh, of of. God's house, if you will, it was to be a house of prayer, not a house of merchandise. All right, so thinking about all this, thinking about this matter of zeal, this matter of being bold, uh, it was then the next day, which would have been Monday, in reading our, our New Testament, reading our, new de or our devotion, the reading was from Luke chapter 8, and I, and, and I was just reminded again so here's a man named Legion. He has so many uh, demons that he's called Legion. A Legion can be three to 6,000 uh, soldiers, a Roman Legion. So he has multiple demons within to where his name is Legion. And I'm not going to take the time to read the whole, the whole passage. It's from Luke chapter 8, 22 through 39. So this is Monday, okay? This was last Monday. So... All right, a matter of being bold in my in my pr praying for boldness to, to share and then praying about this matter of being zealous to have zeal. And then so as I'm reading Monday Monday's devotion, we, we see Legion and we see Jesus bringing healing to Legion to the point where it says uh, that he was sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind. I, I love that passage uh, of the healing power of Christ and the delivering power of Christ. It goes on to say this, that, that Legion then uh, asked Christ. He, he wanted to go with him. Uh, he, he had begged that he might be with him, with Jesus. But what did Jesus do? Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. And so if you're going to ask, who's the least likely uh, candidate to be out sharing and proclaiming the goodness of God? Someone would have said, well, it sure isn't going to be that demon-possessed man. And yet in, indeed he, he did. Christ brought healing to him. Christ brought healing to his whole being. And he wanted to follow Christ and go with Christ. And Jesus said, no, you go back to your own folks. You go to your people and you proclaim what great things God has done for you. And so that's what we're called to do. God, I pray give me more boldness. God, I pray... Give me more zeal for you. God, help me to be like Legion who's willing to go back and tell what great things you have done. Did, did Legion's zeal wane? Maybe. maybe. But we're called to have zeal. And so to me, this is like all coming together as, as a, not a wake-up call, but a, 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 a prodding, if you will, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And a prodding of the Holy Spirit, Scott, I don't want you complacent. Scott, I don't want you to have apathy. I want you to grow forward. 
And so, to me, that's how God's Word has been speaking. You know, I'm, I'm not heavy, laying heavy burdens on you. I'm not saying you have to wear this, but I'm just sharing with you how God's Word has been speaking to me, and, and specifically. Now I want you to turn to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 11 through 14. So Titus chapter 2. Titus is three chapters. It was written... Uh, Paul's writing to the young pastor like he read to or wrote to Timothy the two letters in fact Titus is right after 2 Timothy three chapters you can read it thoughtfully in, in 10 minutes uh, and, and so he's writing to Titus and he's telling him uh, basically to be zealous He's telling him to he, he, he was to set elders in, in, this, in the churches he was to establish that. He was to teach them truth. And uh, but I want to pick up. That's that's enough of a snippet about the the letter. Uh, I want to pick up with verse eleven, Titus chapter two, verses eleven through fourteen. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Verse 11, grace of God brings salvation. We're not saved by our zealousness, if that's even a word. Our zeal doesn't save us. Our good works doesn't save us. We're saved by the grace of God. It's the grace of God that brings salvation. But we see him going on and saying, teaching us to den that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly. So how are we to live according to verse 12? Well, verse 12, we're to deny ungodliness. We're not to have part of ungodliness. God has brought us out of that. How are we to live as a Christian according to verse 12, Titus 2? Well, we're to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. There's going to be a battle. We talked about that for two weeks, the armor of God, uh, the, the flesh and the spirit, that struggle there. But we're to fight the good fight of faith. How do we to live according to Titus chapter 2, verse 12? Denying ungodliness, denying worldly lusts. How are we to live? We're to live soberly. What does that mean? That means to have a sound mind. It means to be in control. It means to to be, have a watchfulness and a restrainness that uh, we're not allowing other things to influence our, our thinking and our acting. How are we to live? Well, it goes on to say we're to live righteously and godly in this present age. So the, in the here and now, day in, day out, 24-7, how are you and I to live? We're, we're to live uh, godly. We're to live soberly. We're to live righteously. That's how we're to live. And then in verse 13, real quickly, uh, we're to be living with anticipation because verse 13 says, looking for the blessed hope and a glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're to be looking for that. We're to be watching for that uh, glorious appearing of Christ. We're to live in anticipation uh, of his return. And, and so in verse 14, it goes on to say, who gave himself for us. Isn't that wonderful? That Christ, God the Creator, gave himself for us. God the Creator gave himself for the created, for the creation. For you and I, created in his image after his likeness, who rebelled, who rejected, who sinned, he gave himself for us, the just for the unjust, that he may redeem us. From every lost deed, purify for himself his own people. We talked about that in First Peter, uh, chapter one and two, how how we are living stones, how we are uh, holy priesthood, how we are God's special people, right? And then it says, zealous for good works. And, and so, what does zealous mean? What does that mean to be to be zealous? And again, I talked about from the Old Testament it talks about a hot, glowing, fervent. Uh, earnestness so there's an intense ardor uh, it's it's a intense devotion and eagerness there's enthusiasm there with that 
And so there's this, this Holy Spirit zeal, if you will, and it says it expresses itself through good works, zealous for good works. Now, I want us to look at one other place, and that's in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, we looked at this, not verse for verse, and, and I'm only going to pull three three verses out of this, but I want, I want you to, to, to take a look at this. Romans chapter 12, verse 9, it says, Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another. And then in verse 11, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The fervent in spirit, very, very similar to, be, to zeal, to zealous, being zealous. When we look at verse 11, we're not to be lagging in diligence. Okay, so in reading that, that's another reminder. Hey, I'm not to lag. I'm not to fall back. I'm not to start uh, becoming complacent. The word diligent means a constant and an earnest effort to uh, to accomplish something in particular and, and uh, a task undertaken. So Paul's saying, you know, there, there should be this constant and an earnest effort. Uh, that's what diligence means. And then the matter of fervent in spirit, uh, it does mean ardor. It means to have a a an embracing and pursuing desire uh, for something in particular. And in this case, our, our fervent in spirit is to be our fervency in God and in serving God. So when we look at verse 14 of Titus 2, and it says, zealous for good works, and then verse 11 of Romans 12, fervent in spirit serving the Lord, we see how zeal and fervency of spirit reveals itself, or I should say manifests itself. It does so in good works. We don't do good works to be saved. We do not do good works to earn salvation. But if, truly, if, if we have truly been born again, there are going to be good works. There are going to be deeds that are evident of our salvation. Works do not save us, but where there's genuine salvation, there will be works, works to reveal or to show or to declare, if you will, uh, the salvation, the new life of Christ being within us. Now, uh, so I want to ask a couple questions with this, and this this will be homework, okay? This this will be homework, and it, it's it's kind of twofold. Uh, what kills the zeal? Sorry for these little buzz phrases. But what does cause our zeal to wane? What takes away that fervency? What causes the fire to sort of just start uh, burning down and and, and just barely even burning anymore. So what kills the zeal? What 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 takes away the zeal? What hinders our fervency? Why? What what causes that? I want you to think about that and, and jot some things down. What what causes uh, what causes the fervency? What what causes the zeal to to wane? All right, and then. Here's the second part of that. What can we do to fuel the fire of, of, of passion, zeal, fervency for God? What can we do to fuel the fire uh, to, to uh, have more of a burning desire, more of a burning passion, more of a fervency of spirit for the things of God? Uh, what can we do? Can we do anything? towards that. Again, we, we know it's, it's, it's work of the Holy Spirit that brings salvation. It's work of the Holy Spirit that brings fruit. But do we have any part in this matter of, of zeal, in this matter of fervency for God, for the things of God, for God and His kingdom? And, and so that's the other part of the homework. 
And now number three, uh, third part of the homework. Since Titus is three chapters, as I said, you can read it, uh, you can pretty much read it in 10 minutes, uh, thoughtfully read it. Uh, studying it deep will, of course, obviously take longer. But here's, here's, here's the word I want you to be watching for in Titus. And that word is the word works. Works. All right? Uh, it's mentioned quite a few times. And, and so I want you to look at the word works in Titus. Okay? Uh, jot them down where you find them. Because, again, uh, where there is zeal, where there is fervency in spirit, there is going to be good works. And so I want to talk about that next next Thursday, Lord willing. We'll go over those two pieces of homework, what, what kills the zeal, what, what causes the zeal to wane, what can we do to fuel the fire, uh, to keep the fire hot, uh, to keep the fire burning, as, as it says, uh, the fire of zeal, the, fir- the fire of passion, of desire, of fervency. What, what, what can we do? Can we do anything towards that? But then I want to explore this matter of good works. What, what, what do they mean? Good works don't save us, but if we're saved, we will, we will live a life of good works. And, and so what does any of that even mean? That's the other thing I want to discuss next Thursday, Lord willing. All right, so that's it. That's our little time of study tonight. And uh, I hope I gave you some food for thought. And, and I hope I, I did bring it all together in this matter of praying for boldness. As a child of God, I should be praying for boldness uh, to, to, share, to share Christ. I, I should be like Legion, who, who God has done great things for me. And so I, I want to go and proclaim that. To, to go back and, and, and tell the people I know of the good things that God, the great thing that, that God has done for me. And, and then to be obedient to this matter of living godly, living righteous, uh, living soberly, and, and living with zeal, and that zeal being seen by good works. Uh, so that's, that's the summary of tonight, and I, I hope you did get some some food for thought let's pray father thank you for time together tonight thank you that this could work out uh, it's so great to to worship uh, on Sundays it's so it was so great to come back Tuesday night and have a study here at the bridge it was so great to have a lot of people out uh, last night at faith Bible and, and to study together praise you for that father and God, I'm thankful that you made it possible to have this little bit of time tonight uh, to go out over social media to, to just uh, challenge and encourage uh, people uh, to live uh, with zeal and to live with fervency uh, for you and, and to not let the evil one beat us up in our, our failures. We're saved by grace through faith. You who begun a good work in us will be faithful to see it on to completion uh, but at the same time, sometimes we just need a little prodding. Sometimes we need a little encouragement to uh, keep on keeping on and uh, a reminder to bump us back into that place uh, of, of burning hot for you and, and not allowing the world to rob us of our zeal, to rob us of our peace, to rob us of our joy, uh, to rob us of our desire for you. Uh, this world has a way of encroaching in upon our our new life in Christ and so God just help us to fight against that but at the same time that we're fighting to rest in your assurance to rest in the finished work of Christ in his name I pray amen God bless thank you for joining me